the Creality Ender tree is not dead yet. Use these 15 refurbishing tips to make sure that the printer can still print for many years to come. The Creality Ender 3 took the world by storm in the year 2018 and I had mine since 2020. Of course, I upgraded it with a lot of 3D printed parts, PTFE Bowden tube, software upgrades, all metal extruder and of course the ever famous BL Touch. You can find all this in our YouTube channel or the links below and in fact, the Ender 3 is the one that grew our channel the most. So is the Ender 3 still relevant today in 2024? Of course, and here are some refurbishing tips. Number one, shaky print bed. In all our Ender 3 installation video, including the Ender 3 V2, we always make sure that this part is been soft immediately from the box. So you don't need any extra tools, you just need the tools that came with the Ender 3. So make sure that the eccentric nut has been tightened properly. So many people were asking, is it clockwise or counterclockwise to tighten the eccentric nut? Well, actually both ways will do as long as you can feel that the nut is a little bit tightened with a little bit of friction. So how to check how tight it is? We just need to roll the roller using our finger. If the roller can roll, that means it's too loose. And when it's tightened, you can easily move the entire print bed by rolling on the roller itself. However, if you're feeling some bumps or nudges when you roll on the roller, that means that the eccentric nut is too tight. But for now, the bait is no longer wobbly and we are done with this step. Number two, print head wobbling problems. And this will impact print quality. So if your print head is wobbling like this, don't worry. The problem is exactly the same thing as well. You just need to tighten the eccentric nut, which is only found in the bottom roller. Same goes with this part, just use the wrench that's provided, tighten the eccentric nut, try to roll the roller using your finger, and if it's rolling properly, the print head will no longer be wobbly. And this will make sure that the print quality is much consistent. Number three, loose Z-axis gantry. This will usually result in one side of the X-axis sacking down or the entire Z-axis itself being too loose. The culprit here is also the eccentric nut. Just use the wrench and tighten it. Use the same tip by using your fingers to roll it. And if the entire Z-axis itself can roll, that means it is tightened well. Number four, dislocated or loose lead screw. This problem will cause your print layers to be uneven and there are sometimes gaps between the layers as well. So to identify this problem, try to turn the lead screw and if it's turning on the coupling itself and the coupling is not turning, then it is loose over here. So using the tools that's provided by Creality, you just need to tighten the top part and also double check the bottom part as well. The bottom part is connected to the motor and the top part, make sure that it's tight, it is connected to the lead screw. You can double check by turning the lead screw using hand or moving the entire Z-axis and the motor should spin together. Number 5. Bait adjustment too high resulting in short or little bait level screws. So sometimes during bait leveling or during printing, we make micro adjustments to make the bait higher or closer to the nozzle and this result in not enough screws at the bottom. And that also means that the spring is not so compressed and not giving enough tension to the bait and this will wobble and cause print layers to be uneven. So make sure that we compress the spring by tightening up the screw while we monitor on the spring compression. Make sure that the spring is not compressed all the way down and usually there will be around half a centimeter of screw left under the turning wheel. Make sure that you repeat the process for all the four sides under the bed. And if you want to uh, do the bed levering right now, you can do it so, but usually I'll do it right before the print. Number six, uneven build plate. Now this is a tough one because after I've been printing for more than 5,000 hours, I will have uneven print bed due to bad handling and sometimes I just yank the stuff from the build plate. So you can see over here using this square tool that there's actually light gap right in the middle which means that the middle part of the bed is actually lower than the sides. So what we can do with this is we can try to use some force to try to bend the bed 
back up again. So here I'm trying to give some force to the middle by twisting the sides and make sure that the middle gets a little bit higher. And you can see right now that it's kind of much better than just now. It is still a little bit lower, but you can just uh, put a posi pad underneath to help to even it out. Number seven, square out all gantries. This particular step, I did it extensively in my build videos. You can watch it in all my Ender Tree build videos where I use this square tool to make sure that all the pillars, all the gantries, the Z axis and the X axis is all squared out by using this L shaped square tool. So if you want to tighten it and make sure that it's square again, you can just tighten these two bolts underneath. However, it is uh, still much better if you just remove everything and rebuild it again if it is not squared and is uh, wobbling very badly. I've seen many ender trees that had to be rebuilt and uh, basically it's not squared from day one. But I always make sure that during the build process, this is done properly so that this doesn't happen. To my surprise, after so many years, everything is still square and all true. Number eight, apply lubricants. These are my go-to lubricants when it comes to 3D printer maintenance. So these are not the usual WD-40. The first one is the dry loop with PTFE. The second one is silicon spray. And the third one is white lithium grease. For the lead screw, it came with grease directly from the factory. However, after a few like 50 to 100 hours of print, usually the grease will worn off. Uh, previously, I'll use a white lithium paste, but it's harder to apply. Now using this WD-40 white lithium grease spray, I can just spray it on the part where the lead screw is connecting to the Z-axis and then slowly move them up and down. However, to make sure that the white lithium grease is evenly applied to the entire lead screw, I use a paper towel to block the excess of the spray and then I spray it on the lead screw to make sure that it seeps in evenly. And with that, I move the Z-axis up and down to make sure that it is applied and sprayed it out. And this is a very important part. After you're done with this, make sure that you wipe off the excessive white lithium grease to make sure that it doesn't contact with any of the filaments and other parts later on. The silicon spray is perfect for the bearings on the rollers and on the ender tree, there's a lot of rollers. There's nine of them on the gantry, four underneath the bed, and this uh, silicone spray is also perfect for the bearings on the x-axis that is supporting the belt for the print head. Don't worry if you get some of the silicone spray on the belting as silicone and rubber works very well. Don't forget the y-axis for the print bit. Number 9. Use high-speed SD cards. There were countless uh, experience from owners saying that the slow SD card or corrupted SD card will cause print errors. So using a good class 10 SD card, you will avoid that problem. Number 10, upgrade your PTFE tube or spray it with dry PTFE loop. I've upgraded this ender tree to the Capricorn and you can watch this video over here as well. For this step, I'll just use the WD-40 dry loop with PTFE and just spray the inside of the Bowden tube and this will make sure that the PTFE helps to reduce the friction for the filament moving towards the hot end. Number 11, adjust extruder clamp. If the extruder clamp is clamped too tightly, it might break the filament before it goes into the Bowden tube. But if it's too loose, then uh, the filament will be slipping and you will cause uneven prints. So you can just adjust on this screw over here. Try to press it down to feel the friction and the amount of pressure that it is putting onto the filaments. Not a lot of guides over here. Just uh, when you're printing, you will see whether the filament is slipping or not. Number 12, Renew Print Surface. This particular printer has been printing for 4 years and this is still the original print bed. Actually, it's not too bad, just that of course there's some discoloration and there's a few holes over here because I accidentally wrongly adjusted the print height. So what I can do over here is then I just use the back part of the print bed, um, clean it up a little bit, and then using this original Ender 3 print surface sticker, I can just apply over it and I get a brand new print surface. Number 13, replace bed clips. 
So since I have a brand new print bed, I might as well replace these worn-off clips uh, because some of them can't even clamp down properly anymore. So these are basically just uh, book binding clips. Just get the smallest one from the bookstore and you can clip it on. So of course, there's also other third-party solutions where you can buy the clips that looks like the Ender 3 V2 type of clips. But this one looks as original as the one that came from the factory. Next, let's proceed to power up the Ender 3 3D printer. Now it looks like new as if it just came out from the factory. Number 14, ensure that the fans are working. This fan is critical to make sure that filament does not get blocked in the hot end. Number 15, clean or replace the nozzle. I bought this nozzle cleaning needle online and this is uh, usually how I unclog and clean nozzle up. So make sure that the hot end is heated up to PLA temperatures. Over here, I just use 200 degrees Celsius. Push in the needle into the nozzle head. Wiggle it about to clear out any stuck filament. And with that, usually the nozzle is clean. If the needle is stuck or you're feeling a lot of resistance, that's the telltale sign to change to a new nozzle. And with that, this 4-year-old Ender 3 is ready for more action and probably will be able to serve for many years to come. So is the Ender 3 still relevant in 2024? I would say yes. With the print quality and the speed, of course it's not very fast, I can still churn out very good quality prints. I hope all these tips help. If you want to watch more 3D printing videos, check out our playlist and check out our channel for the rest of the Fixed Hack DIY. Please like, comment and subscribe to us. See you again. Thank you.